Hey everyone, what's up? And welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be talking about how we are going to be forcing our amaryllis. Uh, now amaryllis bulbs, as far as I know, are a tropical flowering bulb. Here in my zone 6B7, the only option we have to grow this bulb is to force it indoors during the winter. We can't plant it outside because our winters get way too cold for that. But I ordered a couple of varieties this year and I wanted to try forcing them for the first time ever. The first variety that I got is one called Bolero and it comes from Longfield Gardens. Both of these do, I should go ahead and say, not a sponsored video, just saying where I got them because some people ask. Anyway, uh, the description for the Bolero says, Bolero's hot pink flowers have broad petals with a sparkly sheen. These early blooming amaryllis bulbs were grown in the southern hemisphere and will arrive to your door eager to burst into flower. Plant them by mid-November for holiday decorating or gift giving. And that's exactly what I wanted to do with this one. So I wanna give this one as a gift for Christmas. So what I am going to do in this video is I am going to begin the process of potting these up. The other one is Sweet Nymph. It says Sweet Nymph is a pretty double amaryllis with a romantic charm. The flowers have layers of creamy white petals decorated with coral pink stripes. You can see by the picture um, there's just really nice just pinkish kind of corally veining going on in the flowers they are nice big huge it's a seven inch across double blooms which I am really excited for now the thing about amaryllis is they are a little bit pricey they always seem to be a little bit pricey and they are definitely um, an indulgence for me this is definitely something that I've never been able to afford in the past so unlike the other bulb containers, the lasagna planting that we already made, this one is going to be indoors the entire time. I should also mention there are a ton of ways that you can force these. I am going to be forcing these in a pot with soil. However, you can also um, use vases with pebbles or stones and force them in water. Um, maybe eventually I can do another video about how to force these with water using that method but for now we are just going to be sticking with using potting soil simply because I have some potting soil and this is just the easiest method for me. The first thing I'm going to do is I am going to select a pot. The pot that I'm using is larger than my bulb. This is important you want to make sure that your pot is at least about you know two inches larger in diameter all the way around from your bulb. After I've done that, I'm going to begin filling my pot up with a little bit of potting soil. Uh, if the pot is on the bigger side, I would definitely suggest adding a little bit of gravel to the bottom just to make sure the drainage holes aren't, you know, impeded or anything like that. But I think I'm going to be fine. Once I've filled this up about halfway, all I'm going to do is I am going to gently place my bulb in there with the pointy side up and the root side down, obviously. Because we want to start to get this bulb really growing a nice root system and thinking about uh, beginning to sprout. After I've done that, I am just going to add some additional potting soil to this little container. And it will be important to mention that I am not going to cover the bulb. I am just going to add potting soil until about half of the bulb has been covered. Ideally, I want to leave about half to a third of this bulb out of the soil. Then after I have done that from soil around the bulb, I'm just going to water this planter extremely well. I'm going to get that soil nice and saturated and get it ready to grow. Now once I have done that, allowed it to drain out and everything, I am going to place this in a warm location about 70 degrees Fahrenheit until I start to see growth. As I'm waiting for this, it will be important to maintain a watering schedule. Um, you don't want to keep it too wet, obviously. Ideally, I want the soil to kind of dry out um, just the top inch to dry out before I water it again. That way we can make sure that we're keeping it nice and moist, but you know, not too wet where we're going to cause the bulb to rot or anything like that, because obviously we don't want that. As soon as I start to see new growth at all coming from this bulb, I am going to move the container to a nice sunny windowsill and I'm going to keep up that same routine of, you know, consistent watering. As that flower stalk is going to get longer and longer, um, it might be important that I might have to turn the pot every day or every other day just to make sure that the flower spike is growing nice and tall. 
I know sometimes when I grow things in windows especially we want to make sure I'm rotating the pot so that it's not you know super slanted to one direction or leaning or falling over especially with a plant that has such a big flower like this one I want to make sure that it's not going to fall over um, if it gets too big I might end up having to use a stake or to tie it up straight somehow we'll have to see what happens when we get there and I'm actually really excited to see these gorgeous blooms especially as the weather's getting colder because I know I do not like cold weather. According to the pamphlet I received, as soon as my plants do start to bloom, I can move them to a little bit of a cooler area that doesn't receive as much direct sunlight and this will help the flowers last longer so I can enjoy the flowers longer indoors. Uh, so hopefully I'll be able to do that. And on the internet, I've seen a lot of people say that if you treat the amaryllis bulbs correctly when they are done flowering for the season, if you let the foliage continue to grow and continue to get sunlight and, you know, follow a certain procedure that you can actually save these amaryllis bulbs and get them to rebloom again another year, which is something I am definitely interested in. I'm going to be trying to do for you guys and I'm going to share that process with you guys because as I've already mentioned, these bulbs, they can definitely be pricey, um, especially if you are buying one as a gift. I totally recommend that you buy the bulb on its own and buy your own pot because some of these things can be upwards of $42 for the bulb and a nice pot. That's a lot of money. So obviously, I am going to be trying to get the absolute most for my money out of these amaryllis bulb uh, forcings indoors. I hope that makes sense. I'm kind of rambling a little bit. Anyway, that's about it for this video. I truly hope that it was helpful. Um, if you have any experience at all with forcing amaryllis bulbs, tell me all about it down in the comments below. What was the variety that you forced? Um, did you notice anything? Anything I should look out for? Did you stake it? Tips, tricks, anything like that. I always love to hear from you guys. I learn so much just from the comment section. I really do appreciate you so much. If you're new to the channel and you're not subscribed already, be sure to hit the little subscribe thing and the bell icon and whatever steps you have to take these days. Uh, we're making a lot of videos about flowers, um, got flower gardens, vegetable gardens, even some DIY projects are coming up. So uh, if you like a little bit of surprise, you might like this channel too. Tell all your friends, all that. Um, we'd love to have you going to keep on making videos and um, hopefully keep on growing the channel. I hope that you are having such an amazing day. I'll talk to y'all later. Bye guys.